confidence It's what we have to do So we'll have strong kids Safe kids Strong parents too Turn together Learn together It's up to you Strong kids, safe kids Hey, would you listen to that beautiful chorus of voices? Thanks, kids. And now I'd like you to meet a very good friend of mine. We're almost flesh and blood, you know. Mr. Henry Winkler. Hey, take a bow, Henry. Hi, I'm very glad to see you. Hi, Henry! And I'm very glad to see you. And I'm very glad to see you. And parents, I'm very happy to see you. We're all here for the same reason. We have children, and we love them. And I'm here to remind him that he was once a kid, too, like you and me, you know? This is about taking care of kids and kids taking care of themselves. We've got to share the responsibility in learning safety skills. I mean, what could be better than taking charge? So let's take charge. Hey, you're cool, huh? So here we are, parents and children together. We're going to learn about each other. We're going to learn about ourselves and what to do to prevent sexual abuse and abduction. Big words, heavy topics, but I want you kids to know this is not a big and heavy program. Matter of fact, it only weighs about a pound and a half. <laughs> now, we got a lot of surprises for you along the way, so sit there, enjoy yourself, or I'm gonna run over your knees with my bike. There are a couple of friends I'd like you to meet. Key McFarlane. Hey, did I hear somebody say Key McFarlane? Terrific lady, knows what she's talking about. Close personal friend. The first job I ever had in life was working in a children's home for emotionally disturbed kids. I was in charge of six or seven little girls who I learned had all been sexually abused when they were very young. I tried to explain that to the professionals in the agencies and nobody would listen to me. They told me it wasn't true and not to believe the children. And I realized they were trying to hush me up the same way they were trying to hush up the kids. And it seems like I've spent the rest of my career trying to convince grown-ups to listen to children. And Saul Gordon, whose life's work it is to keep families family. And this is a program for families. And... No! 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 Yeah, and about 57,000 kids that were trained by the staff of the Children's Self-Help Project up in San Francisco. Don't forget Chris Wallace. And me, Marriott Hartley. Hi. Now let's try that again. A one and a two and... <laughs> me too, John Ritter. Hey, hello. Oh! What was that? Hey! A few other friends that are going to help us out. Now listen, this is very important. You stop this program whenever you want. See, it's not made to look at like an ordinary TV show. Yeah, hey kids, you got that. I mean, you look over, you see your dad looking confused or embarrassed. Tell him to turn off the program. Look him straight in the eyeball and say, hey, you want to learn something? Because <laughs> you kids got the answer, right? You're cool. I want you to watch it. I want you to watch it over and over again. Watch it with your friends. Watch it with your family. And talk about it so that our message becomes yours. Yeah. Now, listen. You know about on and you know about off. Now we're going to get heavily into repeat. <laughs> repeat. I like that. Repeat. All right. Repeat. The kids never talk. Nobody talks to me. I feel left out. This is a really crucial time for kids. It's a time when they need to be listened to, to be believed in. This is really important for their self-esteem and also important so that they'll grow up to be healthy adults. It's stupid. There's lots of things you don't tell grown-ups when you're a kid. My parents don't listen to me. We think they wouldn't understand. It isn't fair. It's just not fair. But some things we need to tell them because they're bigger than us and they can help. <gasps> what was that? <laughs> you may be watching this program because of any number of sensational cases of child abuse or abduction that you've been hearing about. Of course, the main worry is, uh, will it happen to your child? It's the last thing we want to hear. 
or the one thing we don't want to believe, so we can't hear it, that somebody has harmed or betrayed my child in a sexual way? Sometimes without meaning to do so, we, we blame the child. Here's the way it happens sometimes. Why, Why didn't, didn't you, you tell, tell me? me? I did, I did. I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. And sometimes in our anxiety, we, we blame the child. We say, why, why did, did you, you let, let him, him do it? You told me I always had to obey grown-ups. That's part of it. The other part is that we really have to listen more carefully to what our children are saying to us. <laughs> That's right, baby Smurf. Always tell someone you trust. Don't keep it to yourself. If we figure out how we feel about some very important questions, it'll be a lot easier talking to our children about anything. You're on your way to becoming an askable parent. Oh, yeah, I can dig that, and I'm on my way to becoming an askable fun. I did. If you'd really like to be an askable parent, here are some ideas you might like to think about. You probably won't agree with all of them, but it doesn't matter. Give them some thought. One. Two. Three. There just aren't any taboo subjects. Four. Nothing so scary or so embarrassing that parents and kids can't talk about them. Five. Seven. There just shouldn't be any off-limit subjects. Eight. Askable, I got under control. It's edible I'm concerned about. Excuse me. Eight. Pressure cooker. I've been thinking about the number of times I've made excuses for not saying things that I think are very important to say to my children. Kids, you should hear it from a mom. We grown-ups find all kinds of reasons to not talk to you about important things. Here are some of those reasons. Knowledge is harmful. Ignorance is harmful, not knowledge. Oh, they're not old enough to understand. That's one of the biggest myths of all. I've talked to two-year-olds who understand exactly the difference between different kinds of touching. In fact, some of the youngest children that I've heard describe sexual abuse are the ones who know best what's happened to them. I'm embarrassed. Who isn't when they're talking about sex? It's okay to be embarrassed. That doesn't mean you have to be paralyzed. It'll give them ideas. Of course it'll give them ideas. It'll give them the ideas they need to protect them while they're growing up. Innocence should be preserved. I would gladly give up that loss of innocence in the hundreds and hundreds of children I've seen who have been harmed by their own lack of knowledge. I don't know enough myself. We're talking about a very simple concept you don't need a master's degree in child development. You don't really need any more than the information that's provided in this program. The neighbors will talk. Tell your neighbors to take a hike. Down there in front. I've talked to parents who, um, in trying to tell me about their fears about their children, have called their private parts down there in the front and down there in the back. And I've said to them, oh, it's all right. You don't have to use the children's words. You can use your own. And they've said, those are our own. Children have names for all those parts, but they've never told their parents because they think it's not okay. It's important to know 
what the real names are for things, even if you don't use them all the time. You might want to use your own words most of the time, but it's important to know what they're really called because someday you may have to explain it to a grown-up, something that's happened to you. A lion's not a kitty cat, whether wild or tame, but people sometimes try to give a thing a different name. We often feel embarrassed or even feel some shame. But when speaking of our private parts, here's what to proclaim. That penis is what boys have down in front. Penis is the word, though it seems blunt. All boys have a penis, so no matter what you've heard, remember that penis is the proper word. Vulva is what girls have down below. Even though most people call it vagina, and some children call it Virginia. Vulva, when she's naked it will show. All girls have a vulva, so no matter what you've heard, remember that vulva is the proper word. Both boys and girls have breasts. Each person recognizes they're found upon our chests and grow to different sizes. Our anus is a useful thing indeed. The anus gives relief in time of need. We all have an anus, so no matter what you've heard, remember that anus is the proper word. So don't be appalled, cause that's what they're called. And each of them's the proper word for private parts. Discomfort. <laughs> Nobody's trying to say it doesn't take practice to get good at talking about this stuff. I remember the first time I ever tried to talk to a little five-year-old about uncomfortable things. I was a brand new therapist just out of school, but I thought I was doing pretty great and not being too nervous until this little girl reached out to me and put her hand on my shoulder and said, it's okay, you don't have to be embarrassed. We won't talk about this stuff if you don't want to. Nobody is comfortable about anything these days. When's the last time somebody said to you not to worry and you stop? None of us is particularly comfortable when we're talking about our own sexuality or our child's. Tell your child that you're not comfortable. He'll put his arm around you and tell you it's okay. Even if you're uncomfortable talking about your own sexuality, and most of us are, doesn't mean you can't talk effectively to your kids. Nobody's asking you to become Masters and Johnson. Bridges. This in here is a gap. I want to get from this handlebar to this handlebar. What do I do? I build a bridge. I try to tell them things, but they don't really listen. So I gave up. We got a gap here. What do we do? We build a bridge between kid and parent. With what? Words. When you have a problem, build a bridge. When you need an answer, build a bridge. Just open up the channel and have a family panel. Build a bridge, build a bridge, build a bridge. Whether child or parent, build a bridge. When you feel abandoned, build a bridge. Just make the effort and you will touch a friendly hand. Build a bridge, build a bridge, build a bridge. Hey kids, some parents aren't very good at building bridges. Kids are usually better at this stuff. Why don't you help them out? Somebody's got to be first. It always feels great when you communicate. Build a bridge, build a bridge, build a bridge. Confabulate. Confabulation. All right, let's try something. Turn off the program, turn to whoever is in the room, and talk to them about anything. If you're with your parents, parents, believe your kids. And kids, try it, because it's fun, you'll have a good time, you don't know what you're going to meet along the way. All right, just try it. Turn me off. Click, click, bye. Talk. This talk.
It's all us a world. Nobody is supposed to touch your private parts. Period. And you're not supposed to touch anybody else's private parts. The touching song. There are three kinds of touches, this we know. A heart, a question mark, and no. No means stop. A no touch, that's easy. I don't like it. Don't feel good. Keep your hands to yourself. Hey. Heart means go. A heart touch. That's a touch I like. That feels good. Question mark means I don't know. A question mark touch. What kind of touch is that? That's the one that starts off OK, and then you get this little voice inside that says, uh-oh. It starts to get yucky. You tell somebody you trust right away about that kind of a touch, that uh-oh touch, all right? There are three kinds of touches that we know. A heart, a question mark, and no. No means stop, heart means go. Question mark means I don't know. No means stop, heart means go. Question mark means I don't know. Yes, there is something you can do if somebody is touching you and you don't like it. Now, go tell. Now, let's try that again. A one and a two and... Now, go, go tell. Please. Nobody should touch your private parts except you. Now, we're not talking about taking a bath. You know, when you're taking a bath, sometimes your mother, she's got to wash your private parts. Everybody knows the difference between washing and when washing gets used as an excuse for touching you in private places. Did you know that your doctor needs your parents' permission to examine you to touch your private parts? Oh, yeah. Dig it. <laughs> it's clear what we're talking about. We're not talking about touching and hugging and kissing when two people love each other. We're talking about touching for sex. And when it's an adult touching a child in this way, it's wrong. And we always know. Nobody should touch your private parts except you. But if somebody does, tell your mom or dad right away. No, go, tell. Baby's miserable. That's right, Baby Smurf. Always tell someone you trust. Don't keep it to yourself. There are three kinds of touches, this we know. A heart, a question mark, and no. No means stop, heart means so. Question mark means I don't know. There is something you can do if you don't like the way someone touches you. The big no. You know, when St. George left his house in New Jersey to go and slay dragons, he didn't just walk out in a t-shirt and jeans, dig it. He had his sword, he had his shield, he had his helmet. He was protected. Luke Skywalker, the same thing. When he went after Darth Vader, right? He had the force with him. Well, I'm going to give you something that is going to help protect you, too, against somebody that wants to take you somewhere you don't want to go or do something that you don't want to do or touch you where you don't want to be touched, like your private parts. Are you ready? Here it comes. Your own personal set of armor. The word no. That simple. No. I want everybody to try it with me. Stand up tall. <laughs> Nobody slouching? Everybody tall? No. OK. No. 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 No! <laughs> That's all you got to do. And keep moving. You keep them feet of yours moving. You say no and split. Dig it? Hey! hey, Paul, you got that? All right, now listen up. A guy drives up, right? He stops his car and he says, Hey, little boy, come with me. I need your help. I got some candy for you if you help me. Want to ride my new car? Isn't it beautiful? I'll let you drive. What do you say? No, my kids, they never go with strangers. Not a boy. You just keep moving. You just keep going where you're going, all right? Now, listen. We don't use no when you got to go to school, do your chores, make your bed, go to sleep. You understand? We use it 
when we're in trouble. Now, let's all try it together. Everybody? No. No! Oh, that is music to my ears when you use it like that. Now, listen. Sometimes even the very nicest person needs a no. Sometimes even people you know very well need a no. No. Don't touch me like that. Stop it! Stop. If you don't, I'm going to tell my dad. You know I really like you, but I don't like the way you touch me. No. About secrets. Sex between a child and a grown-up is wrong. Adults know it's wrong. And you know how you can tell? An adult will tell you to keep it a secret. And if an adult tells you to keep something you're uncomfortable about a secret, don't tell someone. Don't keep it a secret. You don't have to keep the secret, no matter what they say. Just blab and blab and blab and blab and blab it anyway. Now, there are some secrets you can keep. You know, if there's a surprise party for your mom, or if it's dad's day and you got a gift hidden in the closet, something like that, you know? What we're talking about is somebody touching your private parts. That's a secret you don't keep. You know, grown-ups can really be sneaky sometimes. If they think that you might tell something that's going to get them in trouble or that they're ashamed of, they might do all sorts of things or say anything to keep you from telling the secret. But we know that these are just crummy threats or tricks that they play. Like, do you ever hear anything like this? Your mommy and daddy would never love you again if you told this. You're so bad, you might never get another hug. You might have to grow up alone. You know, parents don't stop loving their kids. You want to test it? Stop watching the program, go to your parents and say, Hey, would you ever stop loving me? You'll see. They won't. <laughs> Well, I'm glad we got that settled. Now back to Key and Friends. Fonzie's right, you know, Mr. Giraffe. What other kinds of things do grown-ups say to kids to keep them from telling these secrets? I'm gonna kill you if you tell. I can do it, you know. I could come in your house and plant a bomb and you wouldn't even know it. Or I could hurt your parents. Or I could even kill your brother and sister. That's not true. You know that that's a lie. I'm magic. I can see wherever you go. And I'll always know if you tell the secrets. And I can come and get you. That's not true. Grown-ups aren't magic. They just play tricks. You don't have to keep the secret, no matter what they say. Just blab and blab and blab and blab and blab it anyway. Hey! Trust. Hey, kids, you know what? Grown-ups aren't perfect. Some grown-ups can't handle being told a secret like this, no matter how many times you tell them. It's okay, though. Find somebody else to tell. Somebody you really trust. Somebody will help you with this. Remember just Tell someone you trust That's Rule. Don't stop telling. If the first grown-up can't help you, you tell and tell and keep on telling until someone listens. Here are some people you might trust. Try to figure out which one you might tell. It's a good thing to think about. No. Go tell. Remember just tell someone you trust. What's a stranger? A stranger is someone you don't know. Even if they say they know you and you don't know them, they are still a stranger to you. So don't go anywhere with them. Don't take anything from them unless your mom and dad are there to tell you it's OK. OK? A person that you don't know. You're right. Boy, am I proud of you. Hey, baby pack, listen. If a ghost came to you and said, just follow me into the woods and I'll give you an entire packet of power pellets, would you go? <laughs> Ooh. 
And if you were in the woods there and he said, I got a map for a mountain of power pellets, would you go? No. Yes, that is the right answer. That's the right answer. I, you had me worried there for a minute, you know? Ooh. All right, good. You're cool. All right. A circle of pirates. Just like you have private parts, you have a private circle around you. And if somebody comes crashing through and you don't want them there, there are things you can do. See, now, Ben is absolutely right to keep an arm's distance from a stranger. But don't keep your arm out. Do not keep your arm out. It could get grabbed. Even a short arm could get grabbed. You understand? Keep a distance. That's cool. Do not keep your arm out. That's not cool. All right, now look. Philip is sitting on a stoop, right? And Philip is playing a pocket video game. So along comes this guy and says, hey, I got a beautiful scooter. I mean, it's cool and it could be yours. Come on with me. I'll show you how it works, all right? I'll give you my scooter. Philip's parents aren't home, but this is what Philip does. I'm not going with you unless my mom says I can. Mom, can I go with this guy? Now, Philip is my kind of guy. He did just the right thing, and then he did something else. He took off. He ran in the house and locked the door. So what did he do? He said no. He left, and he told his parents when they came home, no, go, tell. Right, Smurfs? You cuties. No. Go. Tell. Now let's try that again. A one and a two and... The home. Now, here's a very funny name for a very serious self-defense tool. It's called... The Honk. Oh! That was Tanya. She's from the Children's Self-Help Project up in San Francisco. Now, the honk is not a sound you make when you're playing, and it's not a game. It's different. You use it when you're in danger. It makes a different kind of sound than the kind of sound that kids usually make. Why are you your throat? Grown-ups don't even pay any attention to that, because we know that's how kids sound when they're playing. The self-defense yell, though. Oh, 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 oh. I like that. <laughs> I like that. That's a sound that comes from taking a lot of air in all the way down into your diaphragm. And then you let it out real slowly. Listen again. It sounds like this. Oh. That's a sound that grown-ups will turn around when they hear. They'll say, that must be a child that needs my attention. I'm going to check this out. That's another thing you can do to keep yourself safe. OK, now let's practice, all right? Nobody lazy. Everybody up. Let's practice the honk. You ready? A lot of air coming out. Uh -huh. <coughs> a blast from the past in honk form. <coughs> Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Ah. Oh, you're getting better. Ah. Ah. Puppy power. You power, kid power, me power. All right, what do we got? We got the word no. We got the hunk. And we got keeping a distance from strangers. All these things are going to help you when you're in danger. Can you dig it? You stay safe. All right. Telling. Adults are usually bigger. Kids aren't as strong. And even if you said no, an adult may force you or trick you into doing something you don't want to do. Now, if this happens, or if it's already happened, go and tell your mom or your dad or your teacher or somebody that you trust. A yucky secret is a lot like getting a splinter in your finger. You may not be able to see it, and nobody else may be able to see it, but you know it's there, and it's going to keep on hurting until you can get it out. It's the same way with these kind of secrets. That's why you have to tell someone so they can help you out. Try the very best you could, and something happens anyway. It is not your fault. I promise you, it is not your fault. And that's the most important time to tell somebody right after something has happened. Always tell someone you trust. 
don't keep it to yourself. You can't always stop an adult from touching you in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable. That's why you always, 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 always have to tell somebody so they can help you out. Appearances. Sometimes what looks like a good thing can turn out to be a bad thing if it's dangerous or hurts someone. Sometimes a good person, even someone you know and love or somebody who looks cool, turns out to be someone who wants to touch you in a way that you don't feel right about. If that happens to you, you find someone you trust and you tell them. Tricks. Okay, this is very important, Dig. Now, we've talked about not going with strangers, not getting close enough to a stranger to take candy out of their hand. But what happens if this goes down? You like kitties beautiful little kitty cats. And somebody comes up to you and says, I have a kitty cat for you, a beautiful kitty cat, all for you. Just get in my car and you can have it, huh? Would you go? No! 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 No. That's what this whole program is about. So that you kids understand that some grown-ups, some adults, some big people use tricks to get kids to do things kids don't want to do. That kitty story, it's just a trick. Here is some more. Now, if a stranger offered you an ice cream stalactite to come into his cave, would you go? Pebbles, look out. No! Ice cream stalactite. <laughs> Pebbles, don't fall for that line. No. Yabba jabba you. Do I ever have a bright kid? Grown-ups are clever. You know it, and I know it. But so are you kids. And once you know the tricks a grown-up may use to get you to go someplace you don't want to go or to do something you don't feel right about doing, once you know the tricks, you'll know what else to do. No, go, tell. Here are some tricks to watch out for. Help me find my dog. Would you go? I would run away and tell my mom or dad. Right. Now, I bet you're going to get this one. Help me find my cat. Well? I can, um, I can believe my funny feeling and trust it and, and do what my funny feeling says. You're catching on. See, that was just a trick. Now, how about, I have some candy here. It really tastes great. Yum, yum, yum. What do you say to that? No! Of course. Now, this trick is, I mean it, sneaky, okay? I'm working with the police department and the FBI, and I need you to help me on a special assignment. Come on. No, my parents said never to go with strangers. Hey, that was Paul again. You know what else he did that was just right? He didn't even stick around for a conversation. Way to go, Paul. Now, here's one of the sneakiest tricks of all time. Your mommy is sick, and she wants you to come with me. Think that one over. Would your mother send someone for you that you didn't know? The fun says, no, parents. It's better not to worry about your children being polite. Their safety is more important. Marriott's rule. If someone tells you to keep something that makes you uncomfortable a secret, don't. Tell someone right away, don't keep it a secret. Hearing. It's rare, extremely rare, for a child to make up something about sex with an adult. It's not the kind of thing that they use to retaliate against somebody that they're mad at. It's not usually even in their repertoire. And for little children, it's not usually even in their experience, unless it's happened to them. We know that kids don't lie about stuff like this. But somewhere, someplace, there's bound to be a kid that's going to tell a story that doesn't turn out to be true. But for every kid that tells a lie, a hundred kids are telling the truth. So even if your kid is telling a lie, listen, pay attention. They're giving you a message that something is wrong. Even if you have to pretend, pretend that it's true. Keep listening. Act as if you believe every word. At the very least, you'll get enough information to find out what's wrong. Hey, parents, take it from me, Yogi. I'm smarter than the average bear. Kids don't make up stories about things like this. Believe them. Fancy's rule. 
A secret about touching your private parts is a secret that you should tell. They leave. Hey kids, I'm gonna talk to your parents for a minute about what to do if any of the stuff we've been talking about should happen in your family. Hey, check me out. This is the way I'd like somebody to deal with me if I had this to tell. Underreact. Your child needs you to be calm. The more matter of fact you can be, the more your child will be willing to share with you. Never confuse. I know you're gonna wanna know all the details about what's happened. But try not to barrage your child with a million questions right away. Find out the facts. Children often disclose sexual abuse in stages, saving the worst parts until they see how you reacted to the part they tell you first. Keep giving them the opportunity to talk. Never accuse. Be careful never to give the impression that you're blaming your child for what happened, even without meaning to. Remember, that fear is the main reason children don't tell. Always support. Reinforce your child for sharing this kind of secret. Assure her that you're glad and proud that she could come to you and talk about it. Always receive. You'll be tempted to bury these incidents or to try to forget about them quickly. But children need your permission to talk about their feelings as they come up. Always comfort. Stay close to your child immediately after he tells you. If he was threatened not to tell, he may need an extra sense of security, such as knowing that he's safe and that there is no real danger. Always believe. We can't say it enough times. There's nothing more important than being believed when you're a kid and you've got something scary to tell. Always believe. It's not your fault. Remember that. You're never to blame. You are never to blame. You are never to blame. You may feel shame, but all the same. You are never to blame. If someone says, why did you let them do it? If someone says you should have run away, if someone makes you promise that you'll never say a word, in spite of that, believe me when I say that you are never to blame. You are never to blame. You may feel shame, but all the same, you are never to blame. And if you think it's your fault that it happened, and even if it felt good when it did, no matter how upset the people all around you are, remember you are just a little kid. And you are never to blame. You are never to blame. You may feel shame, but all the same, you are never to blame. You are never to blame. We in the program. In this world, bad things happen to good children and even in the best families. The first step in recovery is, is when you talk about it. All children need someone to listen to them, and all children need someone to believe in them. Are you an askable parent? Am I? <laughs> Not always, but I hope so. A strong kid is a safe kid, and that's you. Talk to each other. Parents believe your kids, and kids tell your parents something that's important. And kids, you got to find the words to tell them what happened. Parents aren't mind readers, you know. Self-respect is cool, and so are you. Hey.
it's up to you. Now let's try that again. A one and a two and... Strong kids, safe kids, strong parents too. Turn together, learn together, it's up to you. up. 